Hello, today we will see um, a practical example of uh, machine learning and this is not uh, deep learning. So I have this data. This is uh, some real life data from a sensor and I want to differenti differentiate these two states. So this is a state, this is a state. I don't know if this is a state, let's just say this is not a state. So how do we do this? The first step was to um, center this data. So this is the data, the same data, just centered around zero. The second step was to filter, uh, low pass filter this data. So you can see that it's very noisy. Um, a moving average or a, how is it called? The rolling average uh, can do the trick here, should be enough. I need, you have to find the window. Um, I guess you can make it um, dynamic, but in my case, a window of 300 values because I, I know the sampling rate um, should be enough. So this is the clean data. And then one way of um, having, of knowing if it's on or off is to threshold this. You just put the threshold around, let's say this value, so around 2000. And everything that is above 2000 can be considered, um, can be considered, sorry, uh, on and everything below can be considered off. So that's what I did here. But this doesn't work if the um, range of your data, the scale of your data is not the same anymore. So, um, or for example, I can show you an example where it doesn't work if, no, I cannot actually. But if, for example, the data was, um, instead of going up to, let's say here 200, it was going up to 4,000 and the zero was going up to 200, it wouldn't work anymore. So uh, I wanted to come up with something that would make it, um, dynamic and one way of doing this is uh, to use uh, clustering algorithms so that there is a good where is it there is a good cheat sheet made by Amuela I don't know who this person is but it's a very nice cheat sheet um, so in our case, we are in this uh, category, it's clustering. And since our data is not labeled, we cannot use k-means or similar algorithms. So we will go, um, we will go with mean shift. So basically it will try to find clusters and just try to guess it, it doesn't know. Uh, if it's right or wrong, but uh, as you will see, it will do it pretty well. So we can close this. And then here I will, I have the small script is here. So it's very, actually very small. We, I don't know what this line is for, but this helps um, how how do we define what the cluster is so if we change this quantile it will make smaller it will be more sensitive to um, small changes um, but uh, as far as i know this 0 0.5 is the middle ground and this the 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 bigger i think the bigger um the number of samples is the better the algorithm performs but the slower it gets and 500 seems to be working um, well enough in my case. Um, here we print the number of estimated clusters. What we think is the cluster center, which um, should be the threshold. But we will do it in a, in another way. And this this is called this is a function called clustering, and we give it the data. So I have it here. Save. 
then we run the script and so this is the raw data this is uh, the raw data again this is the filter data raw data but centered this is the filter data and this is what the algorithm um, gives back so uh, here you can see that uh, number of estimated cl clusters two one around 700 so one around here and the other one around 2000 and the manual threshold 2100 the manual threshold that i've put was 2000 so actually it did a very good job um, then there was something else i wanted to investigate what if what if we we only had this so only uh, an off state of the machine so it would still have to guess that there is only one cluster this time and not two which can be very hard for um for an algorithm so let's do for an, let's do this so i just took the first 500 uh, data points save relaunch the algorithm so the first 500 points are these ones i think up to this up so this is, these are the 500 points you can see that they don't go up to 200 but they just stay around 30 it's still quite noisy so the first thing is to filter the, the data and here we can see that we have a 10 um, plus or minus 5 around uh, the, the center, central value and this is what uh, the clustering algorithm gives so it says a number of clusters is 1 and centered around 60 which was actually what our data uh, was saying I think it was going between 55 to 65 so that's actually very good since it's all unsupervised we didn't tell the algorithm how many clusters we were expecting or anything uh, similar i guess you need to add some safety nets to not to be sure that um, even if it thinks that you have um, more than two clusters that it will still uh, stay um, two clusters so it doesn't give you 10 clusters I, I i guess if you have 10 clusters that's very bad but if, if you have three clusters mm, it can be it can be not so bad neither because you can have some very high values here and it would think that this is a cluster maybe but that would you can you should be able to handle this as well uh so yeah currently the algorithm in my opinion is doing very very well very good and <laughs> yes uh thank you for watching